words, my dear. <laughs> Radhi. Okay, we are reading from Sri Sri Prem Bhakti Chandrika. In was in a verse uh, page number 370 and this verse is marked uh, 60. Yugala charani priti parama ananda tati rati prema maya parabande kushna nam radha nam ah, this is krishna nam radha nam Upaya Kororasa Dham Charane Podia Paranande Translation Love for the lotus feet of the divine couple is a most blissful thing. Become lovingly attached to the love-filled topics narrated by the Acharyas who know Sri Krishna Bhakti Ras and take to the holy names of Krishna and Radha that are the abode of Rasa, falling at their feet in topmost ecstasy. Um, I will read this again. I think I get here uh, from uh, someone who speaks Russian who translated this because Krishna is written Kushna. And yeah. Love for the lotus feet of the divine couple is a most blissful thing. So because uh, that love is the real love and the real love is coming from the heart. It is not coming from the senses and therefore here it is referred to be the most blissful thing because real love is filling us with joy. When we are really loving someone, then we are very much concerned to please that person. So if we have a spiritual relationship, or at least a, any relationship we have, but uh, with Radha Mohan, we have a spiritual innate relationship, then we are very much concerned to please them with love and affection. And be loving means that we are uh, caring for someone else, caring for each other. And by doing so, also the loving person is filled with bliss. It's a loving exchange. The one who receives the love feels bliss, but also the one who gives the love is in bliss. Because real love is a very deep feeling which is coming straight from the heart and not from our material senses. Becoming, become, become lovingly attached to the love-filled topics narrated by the Acharyas means that we should get there our attachment, mm -hmm. lovingly attached to this topics that are revealed to us by these wonderful acharyas who are their realizations and they are uh, cooling as moon rays like this book prema bhakti prema bhakti chandrika 
are like the moon rays are very cooling and these pastimes or topics are cooling the heat of our mind so that we can lead the mind towards these topics towards the spiritual thing and thus become out we can come out of the identification with our material body and material senses and everything what is related to the body so here it is very important that we can make uh, uh, this difference that we can distinguish what is what and to understand that we are the eternal spiritual soul who is living within this body and to use this body properly our sadaka deha is when we are engaging all our senses our mind our intelligence in the service of radha mohan then we can spiritualize this situation that we are in that means that we are not neglecting the body and the world and thinking that it is something bad because it's a temporary situation who will anyway vanish but everything in the material world can be used in the service in seva and can thus be spiritualized and here it is very nicely a very nice point is made and is written like become lovingly attached to this in the present situation we are attached to so many things who are causing only disturbance in our mind because when we are on the sense level then we are distracted all the time looking for our next opportunity to gratify or please our senses but as a devotee we always want to please radha mohan this we can do by engaging the sadaka deha and if we are progressing more and more in our spiritual life we will understand that we are not only a soul but that we have an eternal spiritual body our siddha deha and that means be, that is needed because only if we have a form we can have a relationship so without a form we cannot have a relationship now we have relationships because we all have a material body who has a individual form so we can relate to each other and in the spiritual world it's the same but there we have an eternal spiritual body made out of love and not with material elements and that is to be cultivated so we can perform devotional service directly to our radha mohan <laughs> and also there we are an individual person as a manjari so in no point of time we are losing our individuality because each manjari are performing an individual personal service to Srimati Radharani as also here each and every one of us is an individual person with individual qualities and attributes which we can also use in our day-to-day -day life in what we are doing and the most important thing in devotional service is how we are doing things what attitude that I have how I behave with other people with myself become lovingly attached 
to the law field topics. So these topics are law field. They are not ordinary topics from the material world. This should be understood. This has nothing to do with loving affairs that we know in the material world. They are spiritual loving affairs. Therefore, we should become lovingly attached to this. It depends on what we want. It is always a matter of our own desire. And that is very important uh, to be clear on our desires. And so, therefore, we, those who want to go this path, are accepting a spiritual master, means a guru who is realized, self-realized in these topics, who lives there and who can guide us. Gurudev is our navigator. If we once can fix our goal according to our desire, we fix our desired goal. And at the point that we can take shelter at the lotus feet of our spiritual master, then he can navigate us, guide us through that goal. That is what Guru is doing. That means that Guru is not the goal, he is the navigator. And we as disciples have to make us available for that guidance, for that mercy. Gurudev's mercy is always there, but we are not receptible for that mercy because of our own blockages that we are creating, namely to be the enjoyer. We want to be the controller because of our Purusha nature that we have within us. So to become a Dasi means that we are uh, cultivating our female side, our Prakriti nature, please, our Prakriti nature, who means that we become loving and caring and have all these female qualities that we are cultivating during uh, the practice of our bhajan. Become lovingly attached to the law-filled topics narrated by the Acharyas who know Sri Krishna Bhakti Ras. This means we are supposed to hear from the self-realized souls who knows these topics because they are living there. And Guru is teaching us through the ear. So to be near uh, uh, to Gurudev and to the sadhus and this great Vaishnavas and Acharyas means that we are here uh, because we want to listen from them so that we can get the mercy of understand something of these topics and get the feeling. And by practicing of uh, our Nam Japa, we are connecting us with the Divine, with Radha Mohan. Therefore, all these things are mentioned here to help us to understand what this is all about and to become a clearer picture of this and what we are doing and why we are doing what. There is always a sense behind that, uh, these recommendations who the author of this book 
is suggesting us. So ultimately, it's up to us what we do and what we not do. It's our decision. But they explaining it very nicely and very clear to make it understandable for us. And that is also the work of Gurudev when we can take shelter by Sri Guru, then he will help us, he will navigate us towards the goal. Means that we at least can understand something or feel, feel the rasa, like it is stated here, narrated by the Acharyas who know Sri Krishna Bhakti Ras. They know that. They know what that is. We don't know what that is. Maybe we have heard already something of what it could be, but really knowing. So we should to, we should take shelter by these great souls and hope that someday somehow we will able will be able to understand something. And take to the holy names of Krishna and Radha that are the abode of Rasa. So the holy name of Radha and Krishna are within this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, who we are chanting every day. And here is it is mentioned that their names are the abode of Rasa. So by the practice, we will get some taste in this chanting of this Hare Krishna Mantra, who will uh, clear our hearts from all the unwanted things that are there accumulated from so many hundreds of birds and things will be more clear because slowly slowly all uh, ignorance and all these things will be removed and then we will start to taste the rasa because this mantra is a spiritual sound vibration when it's not something material and this has a very deep effect if we are practicing it's our meditation like others do other meditations it depends on the goal that you have and also by chanting the holy name will give you the desired goal what you are desiring so we have to be very clear in what we are desiring and where we want to go. Falling at their feet in topmost ecstasy. So then we, those who get the taste for this, then we are falling at their feet, at Radha Mohan's feet in topmost ecstasy. Wow. Yes, everyone is invited to share, please, if someone wants to share something. So, now, uh, commentary from Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti at Tika. I think this is the commentary. He says, May I be 
always lovingly attached to the loving topics about Sri Krishna Bhakti Ras composed by the devotees who are realized in this. Charana stands for Radha Madhava's lotus feet. So this is a nice prayer. May I always be attached to this who is revealed, who is uh, being revealed to us by the realized souls. There we should take shelter on those who have realization in these topics. So, by the mercy of this great Vaishnavas who have realized these topics, we can also have realizations if we are hearing directly from them. Means if we take shelter of this. Rasik Vaishnavas and let us guide through the path. Okay. Uh, maybe now comes the comment. Confidential Bhajan Sudakanika Vyakya. In this Tripadi Srila Narottam Thakur Mahasaya re reveals some confidential items of the bhajan practiced by the Raganugya Sadakas through his own prayers. First of all, he says, Yugala Charane Priti Parama Ananda Tati. May my love dwell in the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha Madhava. Tati meaning there or in this love I will attain paramount bliss. In the Dai Dai Tiriya Upanishad, it is said, Saishanandasya Mimamsa Bhavati, the bliss of Hiranyagarbha, the progenitor, and others, is a hundred times greater than human happiness. Greater than that is again the bliss of the impersonal Brahman. The shloka yatovacho nivartante aprapya manasa saha anandam brahmano vidvan na vibheti kutaschana shows how special and unlimited that bliss is. After that the words ko yevanyat ka pranyat yat eva akasha anandona syat show the bliss of the all-pervading principle of Brahman, the Upanishadic words ananta dhyeva kalvimani bhutani jayante proclaims the joyful message of universal bliss. The whole universe attains birth from bliss. It is remaining in bliss and it is destroyed in bliss. Prabhupada 
From this, it is learned that nothing can exist in this world outside of bliss. He who is anandarupam amutam, he who is rasovaisa, he who is sarvesham bhutanam madhu, that blissful, nectarian, flavorful and honey-filled Lord has created a world in which misery can never exist. Thus, the happiness and distress that follows, of course, of the living entities' lives are nothing else but the culmination of the karmic reactions of the conditioned souls who are actually vessels of spiritual light. So, because the spirit soul is eternal, it is always full of bliss. And the distress that we are experiencing in this material world is because of the covering by our actions, namely our karma that we are accumulating. So we are enjoying our karma from our good activities, helping others be pious, giving charity, or we, in some lives, or also later in life, we can also suffer uh, the reactions of uh, bad karma from bad things that we did. But all that actually has nothing to do with the soul. This is only because of our identification with the material circumstances that we are in at the present moment as we were identifying in our past lives, each life fully with all relatives, family members, country and everything. And when this life comes to an end, all these things will end. And according to our desires, we will get a new body and start again with new circumstances. And then we are identifying again with that circumstances. Who, in the spiritual point of view, has nothing to do with us as a eternal. Now it's good. Okay. Sorry, connection problems. Okay. Yeah, so this is the Maya, the illusion in this world that we are thinking that we are this body. And I was reading uh, a few weeks ago, I opened the Bhagavad Gita 13th chapter and uh, I was reading two or three verses. And in one purport, Srila Prabhupada says that we are since time immemorial that we are in this sams samskara, uh, samsara, in this uh, circle of repeated births and death so much, so long, that somehow for us it becomes, it became used to be in a material body. So we take this as a normal situation which is the unnormal situation because it's always a temporary situation. Uh, 
But then I could understand why it is for us, maybe it's also especially difficult for us Westerners who are much more identifying with all the material circumstances and the body to come out of this bodily consciousness and start to cultivating a spiritual consciousness or a spiritual body and try to live in that, which Prabhupada also in the Bhagavad Gita says that that will be our constitutional position, means that is what we are meant to be as an eternal spiritual soul. But it's not so an easy thing, as he wrote, that somehow we became used to be in a material body. So, yeah, every time I read also when it is only a small sentence, a verse and a purport from Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada is always very clear. So things become very clear and very, he presenting things in a simple way so that we can uh, easily understand it. Yeah. So I think here this bliss who is mentioned is the bliss, the spiritual bliss, the soul who is always in bliss, who is supposed to be blissful. Intrinsically, the living entity is a particle of spiritual bliss, but because he has been averse to the Lord since beginningless time, his heart is contaminated, and because he is devoid of spiritual knowledge, he remains seated within material bodies and continues to suffer the beginningless pangs of material life. So this adversity towards the Lord, it is written here, is because we wanted to be the controller by ourselves. Meaning, we said, we pretend to play God in the material world. So we can do that. We can try to be the controller. But where will, will lead us this path? So, and then, because the living entity is situated in this situation, it is uh, all the knowledge or some spiritual knowledge is not there because the heart is being contaminated by, as I said, so many lifetimes and so many uh, things we've done, unfavorable things, always thinking we are the enjoyer, I'm the enjoyer and everything is made for my enjoyment. So here we have to change this mentality. Uh, we all who have a spiritual name always at the end of the name, it's Das or Devi Dasi means that we are supposed to be the servant. A servant is serving someone who then is enjoying what the servant is not meant to be enjoying by himself. 
So here we have to change our uh, mentality and attitude uh, how that we want to act or in which way we want to go. And this we can only do as soon as we understand what our position in this world is. There are, since time immemorial, there are innumerable souls and innumerable universes. And we think of ourselves how important that we are. But considering of all that, there is no question of being that important. So maybe if we can take all this in consideration, we can become humble. And when we become humble, then we can surrender. Because uh, The ego never wants to be humble or surrender to anyone because the ego pushes oneself up and is always concerned for our own self aggrandation means we are in the controller mode. As long as we think that we are the controller, we are the doer, then we cannot relish Bhaktiras. So to relish this, we have to become the viewer, means female, Adasi. We in this present Sadakadeha can learn this to be Das or Devi Dasi, and then we can do it also in our Manjari form in the spiritual world, otherwise it will not be possible. We have to train this here in our present situation, if we want so. So these are all recommendations in the Shastra, recommendations of the Acharyas, because it is always written, you should do this, you should do that because ultimately it's our own decision if we want to do so or not. Nobody's forcing us to do anything. Love cannot be forced. Love is coming from the heart. Rade, Rade. Rade. You explained very nicely what is our situation. So I think it, it needs also some, some feelings which we can maybe get to, uh, to take this in our heart. So I would like to try to give some example if you agree yes please so a child which was run away from home is out there in the big big space and tries to actually do what the parents did somehow or other but of course in a better way otherwise he would not run away <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the child thinks, yes, let me do it better than Mama and Papa. I will create my own world and this will be better. But after some time, it realizes that without the protection, without the love, it cannot go further. So it wants to go home. But now there's the problem. When it was so long out of home, the tendency to be the parents is actually installed now. 
So now, if mama and papa would say something, the child would say, no, 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 it's not like that, it's like this and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the patterns which are growing out actually out of this time, we are not at home. They are actually our problem. They are patterns. They are not conscious. If it would be conscious, we would hear Bhagavad Gita once. We would consider. We would say, yes, Prabhupada is perfectly right. So let's go home. Forget all this, all these other things. But now, actually, the work has begun. Because the patterns are unconscious. We are not aware because of this long, long time we were actually in this role. We cannot just jump out of this role. So we have to step by step understand actually where we are wrong in our uh, feelings or understandings. And this has nothing to do with, like you said, we must. No. It's free will. We understand we are not happy. We want to be happy. We want to be in Ananda because this is our real situation. So we have to decide, yes, I want to live in this Ananda. I am Satchit Ananda. And now there's the other point. Some people try to, under uh, try to understand immediately, yes, Satchit Ananda is also God, so I am God. Well, that's wrong. I'm not God. I am like God. I am out of the family of God. This is the soul. I, the soul, I am godly. But I am not God. And actually, yeah. this is our very, very good luck that we are not God. Why? Because... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually was giving us a present. What kind of present? He gives us the chance to live in full Ananda, in the highest Ananda possible, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving the highest rasa to the lowest people, offering it. And the only thing for that we have to do is to understand our position. This is actually what he is telling us. Trinata pi sunichana, taro api sahishnara, amanena amana, am amantena, kirtaniya sadahari. So we can be with Radharani and Krishna's love, they exchange always. And that means, Ananda, when you are with the exchange of the highest possible love with Radharani and Krishna. So we can be there. We only have to understand our position, that's all. And we are like the children. Mm. When Mama... My sister? We came out of that. So we are part of that love because we actually emanated out of this love. Every soul is a particle of that love. So we belong to that. It's very natural. We don't have to say, oh no, I'm so, so bad person. No, actually, we are not bad persons. This is false ego. I identify with a bad person which is only interested in their own good. I ad identify in the moment, but it's just a game. I can leave that game. I can step out and say, please, 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 Mama, take me home again. This is all we can do, actually. We want to go home. We want to be in Ananda. And we really, really, really deeply want that. And then Mama will take us back home, and Papa also. And then we are in the right position as a child, and we can actually be 
in full ananda with them all the time, completely happy, completely satisfied, because this is our real position. This is actually what we are. We are not God and we can be very happy that we are not God because just think about what he has to do. How many people are praying every day? I mean, just in this universe, you know, there are many universes. Oh, please, God, give me this. Please give me that and take this away. And I don't want to have this. And I want to have that. And I this and that and this and that. And, and he has to take care of all these things. Only he can manage that and at the same time be completely in love. We have not this capacity. So we can be very happy that we are out of this business. He is giving us a better position. You just relax. You are in Ananda like we. You have the same enjoyment like us. But actually even more. Because you are free of duty. So I like to see it from that side, because from the other side, it, it sometimes it sounds like, yes, you know, you are wrong, correct yourself, you know, it's like from a scholar. So I like to see nowadays that actually I'm the child, I was running away, now I want to go to go home back. And I want to be in love forever now. So I just wanted to give this possibility of, of feeling it from, from that side. So very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, I meant this uh, by uh, saying we have to be clear of our desires i meant yeah how we are approaching and this is a very nice maybe a feeling was a little bit missing that Actually, I, I don't think feeling was missing. I, I got the feeling from you. I just wanted to express it because I'm an artist. This is my job to express things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. There are Today, this is only to seven uh, yeah. five thirty. Just one hour, and now it's like here to connect to the other Zoom. Uh, okay, we have to connect to the other Zoom. This is only one hour, but uh, it's a very interesting topic. This topic pops out, and yeah, I before I'm reading something. Here, uh, Suniti asked me, but in general, I do not prepare because I'm reading and whatever it is coming, it's coming. So the nice thing is in the sharing, everyone can uh, learn so much and we can uh, take advantage from each other. Hearing the realization from each other is very helpful. And I'm very thankful that uh, this Ratadasyam family is growing so nicely and so many nice devotees and we make so good connections and so beautiful. Okay. So thank you very much for coming. Jai Jai Sri Radhe